morning, everyone, and thank you for attending this conference, and welcome back if you have attended in previous years. We keep working on reinforcing the idea that privacy by design is essential for a product or service to be competitive in a global market. This time, we are putting our focus on the European data health space. Large corporations show that for the health sector, 2024 will be a year of great innovation and growth. And therefore, the need to have and share health data, including genetic data, will grow. All areas of healthcare data will be driven by the European regulatory framework that encompasses regulations such as the Data Governance Act, the Data Act, or the AI Act. EDHS puts into place mechanisms to safely share and interchange health data. Therefore, it vastly increases the possibilities of creating new products and services that improve people's welfare. And all of that will be based on data, both personal and non-personal. This circumstance makes it always necessary to consider that behind all data, there are people. In fact, even when non-personal data is processed, people's rights and freedoms may be affected. In this context, privacy by design provides us with tools to better fulfill this goal. However, in order to be effective, we need not only to take into account the data itself when being processed, but also to consider that it uses personal data, which must also be taken into consideration when services and products are being designed. Without further ado, I give the floor to Dr. Marit Hansen, who has been the State Data Protection Commissioner of Land Schleswig-Holstein since 2015. Before being appointed Data Protection Commissioner, she has been she had been deputy commissioner for seven years after graduating with a diploma degree in computer science in 1995. Dr. Hansen has been working on privacy and security aspects. Her focus is on data protection by design and data protection by default from both the technical and the legal perspectives. And today, she will be talking about this topic in the context of European data health space. Over to you, Dr. Hansen. Thank you so much. So thank you, everybody. Um, I was told many of you know already Schleswig-Holstein, but I'm not coming from Neumünster. This is not the town I'm coming from, only that you are aware of that. I'm coming from Kiel. So for those who got the <laughs> information. Okay, I hope my, yes, my presentation is there. Thank you very much. We are in the very north of Germany, such as, I think, similar uh, Barcelona in Spain, also located at the sea. And uh, I always love to come here. Thank you so much, so much for the invitation. Um, the European data health space. Who knows a little bit about that? Please wave your hand now. Oh, yes, it's a uh, rather 30 to 40 percent, I'd say. Okay, and data protection by design and by default. Who knows about that? Same and not the same people. Okay, thank you so much. I can only give you some bits and pieces, and it's really a too big topic to delve into what would it, what I'd like to, to do, but perhaps uh, we can do in the next years uh, proposing the better solutions. Um, what is the European health data space? Mo most of you have some idea, an ecosystem comprised of rules, of course, of data practices and so on. And for two main topics, the primary use of data for the individuals, for the treatment, and the secondary use for research. So these are the, the main characteristics. I quote here the, uh, European, um, the, the European Commission. And I, I want to go forward now to see what about the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. It's obvious sensitive data. And uh, well, everything is already regulated. Why do we need now extra regulation for that? 
Okay, of course the lawmakers, they are still negotiating the last pages probably of uh, the, e, the uh, EHDS. Um, they also thought about that and uh, had a very simple solution. Why not saying the, this regulation shall be without prejudice to everything, in particular the GDPR. So this means if the regulation for the European health data space comes, then the GDPR is not affected. It still applies. It's in parallel. It exists. And so we have our Article 25, data protection by design and by default, and it, it will apply. So very easily solved. But obviously, I think it's a nice sentence uh, to, to write that, but in reality, it may be more difficult because um, data sharing is now in the middle of the data uh, of the data space, and this, well, of course, has to be treated in specific ways. And um, I first want to repeat: What do we want on the European level, and what does the GDPR demand? It's about trustworthiness. Otherwise, uh, probably people won't agree that they should share their health data. And uh, thinking about the notion of risk. Risk is also known in uh, other parts uh, of, of uh, science or practice. Uh, the probability and the impact is important for characterizing the risks. But what risks are we facing here? Of, of course, security risks. Um, you must not uh, access uh, the data patient, uh, patient data uh, if you're not authorized. The doctors are allowed, your doctors are allowed, but not your neighbors. Um, but there are much, much many more risks, and uh, they stem from our charter of fundamental rights. So we have to take a big picture here. The GDPR makes it short and say, mitigate the risks. And in principle, it's like these kind of bridges. So we don't want the left part as a symbol for our data spaces on the European level, where we have high risk of slipping or falling uh, of an accident, of a disaster, and it would be not lawful without prior risk mitigation. It can be very costful if you have such a bad, badly built uh, a bridge to repair everything and build a, a good thing. The GDPR asks for more the right solution, so, so for something which from the beginning is integrated uh, with the GDPR requirements and uh, technical and organizational measures, and then we have an appropriately uh, built uh, measures, uh, built in measures for the bridge and also checkability, so the trust can be communicated and not that patients only have to have blind trust in the system. This probably is necessary also for the patients who should be encouraged to share the data for purposes also of research. So I, I uh, put together a little bit the risks concerning health data. I think everybody is aware of that this can be very risky, not only security risks, also wrong diagnosis or wrong treatment. Um, for example, there are artificial intelligence poisoning attacks where a picture of um, the, the image um, of where we can de 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 deduce uh, breast cancer, they're changed with only one pixel. Only one picture pixel is changed. And then the AI, sa AI says, yes, woman, you have breast cancer. Although the, 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 there's nothing to see on the medical image. So these are risks of manipulation, then ca they can uh, uh, have um, psychological uh, difficulties, of course, with those who get a wrong diagnosis. The treatment can be wrong, so it's very important to, to do it correctly. And you see also discrimination difficulties, discrimination risks, and uh, if you cannot access your da data as a patient, this can also be difficult. So we, have don't, we don't have to, uh, too much time, so really I will show a few things where we can put in data protection by design throughout the, the entire life cycle. And this means building our bridge in a, in a proper way. And what are the data sharing scenarios? And now I've, uh, I refer to some publications for, from ENISA two years ago and one year ago, or 
we, we, we wrote that, so this year and last year they were published, and uh, where you can look up everything and uh, well, understand, I hope, also everything what in principle is possible. Because, of course, everybody who knows a little bit data protection thinks immediately about encryption. Encryption is a solution, and if we have here a user proposing or, or propagating data in, uh, to, for, for different parties, um, then it can be done in an encrypted way so that third party D in this picture does not get any data. But of course, uh, this is very cumbersome because you don't know uh, beforehand uh, if you have encryption, who will be in the, the, um, in the group of authorized recipients. You can do that individually. This is, well, quite, quite uh, well, normal stuff. But you can have better solutions if we don't know beforehand who is the recipient. And I will s name a few of those. We cannot explain everything, but only that you know um, in, uh, on, on, in uh, these uh, concepts exist. Uh, they have been existing for decades now. One is attribute-based encryption, that you uh, have an asymmetric encryption where the user is with the with software, with an app or so, is uh, putting in encrypted information, but they, there can be more decryption keys for one encryption. I really have to rush through the slides, so bear with me that it, we can only have a look at the pictures. And we see here that then a doctor, here on the right side, uh, can uh, see the, the information and uh, decrypt that or also um, discuss the, the topics with the colleagues, for example. But there are other ways, and uh, they may, may be better for um, a health data space, that we have a proxy, uh, another entity who can do the re-encryption. Uh, that's quite clear if I, if I ask my colleagues, um, please re-encrypt, re decrypt and re-encrypt the information that this is possible, but there are ways that the um, proxy cannot see what is being re-encrypted. So it can be blind. It can, that there are ways to encrypt or also to pseudonymize data with the proxy that has not, has not to be very trustworthy. They cannot see what they are producing. They don't know the real names. These concepts are much better than the third party, let's say a Google, in the middle, seeing everything, doing everybody a favor, but really having access to the clear text data uh, themselves. And um, then we have a bi uh, the bigger picture here for data spaces. This is now the newer publication from Enisa, where those who uh, put forward the information um, have also shared them in a way where they are not allowed to get them back in a way where they, the patients can be identified. So a hospital knows their own patients or the doctor teams know their own patients, um, but if they put it in a data space and get them back, they must not get more information on their patients. This is an additional problem, but it can also be solved. So only to, to see that also the identification for those who are givers of the data, uh, they, this has to be taken into account. If we think about data spaces, these are requirements. And uh, then we talk about pseudonymization, where um, also, we see that um, many people tell me, no, we don't want pseudonymization, we want anonymization, then we are, we are getting rid of this GDPR. With anonymization, no GDPR applies. In the theory, correct, but very, very, very often, and especially in the medical field, anonymization does not work, is misunderstood, or the results, if it's real anonymization, they are not utilizable. So, they are nothing wor worth uh, doing with. Research won't uh, be possible. But pseudonymization is the way to go. And how to do that here if researchers in the bottom or on the right side, the doctors, uh, get access to the information? Um, it's rather pseudonymization, yes. And again, here we have a the solution uh, named uh, PEP, polymorphic encryption and pseudonymization, where we can combine the encryption and the pseudonymization. And um, we don't need in this solution to know beforehand who is the authorized recipient. But of course, we need the gatekeeper uh, to, to make sure that only authorized information is uh, being shared or with, with authorized people. 
Um, we can have intermediaries involved. This is also here as a data intermediary. They get the data, a data health data space is not necessarily also the holder of data. They can be also the holder of rules and the way to, to get a distributed uh, data space. Um, but here we see an intermediary who should take care of whether everything is working fine. And so here we see a user, uh, and this is quite typical for Germany, I think they have a, an own idea what they want to share and what not. So I, I'm okay with um, sharing my data with the utilizers, so the third parties, uh, X, Y, Z, um, but only within the EU and only for the next two years, and uh, only for research and perhaps not for commercial research. So this would be something where, and not for military purposes or only for military purposes, so people are s s quite creative. And I think we would overdo uh, if we really take care of each demand, um, but we have to discuss, is it more than opt out or consent? Can we have something where people can sh say, yes, I want to give my data, and, and even more, even very personal data, but only under specific conditions, only if I get the results, if, I'm, if I know that with my appendix, uh, several doctor degrees were made, so this would be a good feeling for me, uh, contributing to this whole uh, uh, scenario. And we see here where we could put policies inside discussing or uh, negotiating or setting the conditions which could also be enforced so that it's really not only a binary thing, yes or no, or the politicians say yes and the public says, 10% says, no, we, we are not in, in favor of uh, re-electing you anymore. Uh, so having something where accountability is guaranteed and also that was one of the risks where people can exercise their rights because of co we, we thought, uh, saw in the, the beginning the GDPR applies and if they are pseudonymized data and uh, with some researchers why should people uh, are being deprived from their access rights? No, in, in principle they have their rights and if it's based on consent they can also withdraw their consent. So coming to the, the summary here we are in a space where we have health data, and in general, this is a high-risk area. We can argue whether it's a sound to begin with a very difficult problem to solve, but I think if we solve it for the health data space, then the other data spaces will be much easier to, to be solved. The GDPR is applicable. It demands risk mitigation. Article 25 says data protection by design by default. It, from the very beginning, we have to build in data protection, and this can be done with encryption and pseudonymization. Those would, would be the uh, very um, um, the, the forefront mechanisms here, but also taking care of data subject rights and having a sound data protection management. Anonymization is usually not the way to go or not to rely on, so be prepared that you stay within the GDPR. So not, not arguing too much, but make a solution which is possible to combine with the uh, regulation of the uh, GDPR. And uh, the uh, European health data space is an infrastructure, so it makes really sense to set proper standards, proper defaults, and not piling up every health data record uh, to, to a huge central database, which is much too risky, and uh, I really would like to see other solutions, but probably we have to build them in the very ne few next weeks or years. You get all the slides, so for those who, are, who are taking pictures, no problem, but you get the slides anyhow, and see also then the links where you see, if you want to take the next steps, where can you see how, everything is explained, how to, which way to go. That it's something where, again, you find many, many references and so some homework to be done for next year. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Merit, for your explanation. Uh, with these slides on, we are, you are almost pseudonymized. That is good when we are, a good approach when we are talking about health uh, data but uh, uh, you can arrive to be identified uh, in this. But, uh, we have uh, only 10 minutes, so uh, we will uh, answer any questions that uh, here you have. 
but I would like to, to make, uh, to begin with one question related uh, of the things you have said. Uh, are there uh, solutions uh, in the market uh, to the problems that you have uh, explained? So what, what, I, uh, what I proposed here was old stuff, old scientific stuff, really decades old, and uh, many improvements, many attacks, many improvements to the attacks, and so on and so on, old stuff. But do we have that in the reality? Can I buy a, a product now? Very few products are out there because there was so little demand, because data sharing was not the, the thing to do, and especially not to combined with the GDPR. So I think now this is now the market niche, market niche to, to really put them uh, well in, in uh, publicity, to discuss that, to demand that, because um, what I see this will work. But perhaps one, one thing, I also said, don't do it in a central solution, not one single database. This health data space could be, of course, made up in a from a distributed system. And there could be different kinds of um, solutions. If we want to learn from that, not having a major flaw, but learning from different solutions, this is also the way to go. So I really like to see now those solutions getting live. Uh, does somebody has any question? I see the specialists have some questions. Uh, yes, thank you very much for the presentation. It was very interesting. I wanted to ask you uh, this idea of uh, allowing the, the users to be able to control uh, the use of their personal data or health data. Uh, do you know if there is any inter interface or standard or recommendation uh, for allowing different providers to, to join this, uh, this strategy in order to, to help the users to know what is being done by the data and control what is being done. So, so um, if I get it correctly, um, how well the, the, the users, um, the, the, meaning the citizens, the patients, they probably um, won't have too much choice. So they're, they're, because the health data space needs data, and probably the health data space will say you have to provide, perhaps with an opt-out possibility, it also, it's also discussed whether it should be opt-in. Uh, I don't think that it's uh, already um, solved this uh, issue. Um, but anyhow, I think we need trustworthiness and there might be also um, next to the official data space other ways for uh, people disclosing information, uh, um, propagating uh, the data for research or getting also some, some benefits. Um, but not against money, but really because people are convinced. And so I, I'd like to see if it's aimed at the policy questions, also some, something more that people feel in control and get in, into control more than probably what is seen. Because I see, in, at least in Germany, there, meanwhile, mistrust has developed that uh, people would like to well, don't go to the doctor anymore if the doctor has to disclose the information. Okay, thank, thank you very much. <coughs> thank you for this. Uh, the, my name is Josep Domingo Ferrer. I am Commissar Rubi de Virgili uh, and I specialize in data protection. So I liked your, your presentation because it shows that there is a pragmatic aim to adapt to the requirements of uh, the healthcare. Anonymization is not useful, as you say, in many cases. But then people didn't know how to go uh, ahead when using pseudonymization because you have still um, personal data. My, my question is, uh, how does this effort in Europe regarding regulations and um, protection um, um, agree with, with the rushed uh, agreements between the European Union and the United States for personal data protection? So we are trying to, to solve the issues uh, in Europe, but then there is a, a way out uh, whereby you can transfer personal data to the United States. Um, and, and there was the Schrems case uh, appeal two times, and now there is another agreement that has been taken in a rather rushed way. So what is your view as a, an information commissioner? Yeah, I, I think for health data, uh, this has not happened so much. In principle, it's, it's uh, possible also no, right now to, to use the pa uh, patient uh, record systems from US or also other uh, providers. But um, at least, for the, for the um, uh, state-funded uh, medical system, this 
the, the, the steps have not gone too far from what, what I see. There are some like, uh, how, how do I get a date with the doctor, uh, how to, to negotiate when I have time or the doctor has time, and there are some of the, um, uh, so some of the pro pro uh, provider services. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, if we really want something um, to put together so that people can travel in, in Europe and getting to a doctor to, uh, regardless where they are or uh, to having research with European citizen data and not having to buy something from different um, uh, databases. I think this is now a chance. Uh, on the other hand, are there, will there be also the US and other providers in this ecosystem? And I guess yes. And then we have to discuss what about the sovereignty debate. Um, I'm not totally sure about the European Commission uh, state uh, on that because yesterday, for the day before yesterday, we heard about Mistral. It's a French uh, AI system and they lobbied ma massively against the AI Act and now <laughs> they joined forces with Microsoft. Uh, so they, they argued we have to be digital, digitally sovereign in, in Europe and therefore you have to have a loser uh, regulation and the parliamentarians listened to that. Um, and now they say, but now we are Microsoft. So this is, this is not the way to go, I think. We still have to have sovereignty, um, or more sovereignty, even if it does not mean not to negotiate, not to, 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 to deal with others. And now, what about the guarantees? If we have guarantees on this uh, level, then it's not so bad if there are also um, US or other providers, like uh, with the blind pseudonymization or blind encryption. Why not? If they don't get the information and their contracts and we can enforce if and so on, uh, it might be a way to go. So I, I think we can get the best from both, uh, both worlds. On the other hand, this was only a vision or this was a toolbox. It's not clear that we will go that way. It can be the central database on a pile um, and it can be uh, from a European company where then the next day it belongs to a US company. It's not excluded here. Related to with this question, it will be the same approach uh, by the point of view of the health databases in the different states of the European Union are not the same uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the data that they can share with the European uh, space? You mean the member states? The, the, um, here in Spain, uh, we yeah. have much more uh, da database than in other countries, and, and when we create a space uh, to be shared, uh, the, the value of the data uh, is not the same as the, uh, the information are not the same. Yes, yeah, it, it, uh, of course we are, can have some envy debates, especially I think in Germany, because in Germany there are now many people saying the government is not trustworthy enough, so we, we don't want, want to share our patient data. They really say opt-out is not sufficient, we, we really we don't go to a doctor, there can be hidden doctors treating them or so, and then they say, oh, but we have Spanish data now, now we can do research, but uh, don't ha have to uh, convince our uh, uh, society. I think we need European values being enshrined in technology and data processing and of course the trustworthiness like with the bridges that it's okay to go over this bridge because it's safe for everybody and not of course saying um, we, we now want to rely on Spanish data then we don't have to do with our German patient organizations anymore. Um, I understand that. P perhaps it's good if we have Spanish solutions in that way being ahead and saying we can rely on that. We have invested and we are good in data protection by design, and I see it from your office. <laughs> then then uh, the, the, the German publicity can perhaps also see that. We, I haven't mentioned certification. This is, I think, also something where those solutions, because they are infrastructure, they are so, so well, they, they should be working so well. Uh, they should be certified. And, of course, the certification as such, and it's now possible in Europe, uh, it can be... Um, uh, there can be supervision for the certification, so this may be a thing where we really get all the documentation, the good concepts, the data protection impact assessment, fundamental rights impact assessment. It would be the first time. Well, we have uh, 20 uh, seconds left. Uh, very quick, please. Yes, uh, I would like to know how do you see the use of IoT in the field and how to secure it, its use? Thank you. Okay, okay, it depends on uh, the Internet of Things, so it could be sensors in my smartphone or uh, in my I implanted even, it can be anything. And therefore, it's, I think it's not one size fits all, especially the very dumb sensors. It's very difficult to, 
to uh, do, do security stuff or safety or also data protection stuff. On the other hand, think, thinking about the full spectrum, um, having, for example, smartphones, secured smartphones, collecting this information, having a ways of federated learning that the information does not leave the, the user's side, but the results do, so people can do research. Um, this, I think, is, uh, has, has a good chance of um, being further developed. There's a few prototypes. Um, in Germany, some people say, tell me, no, we don't want to invest because the other way is all right. Or, well, let's wait for the Spanish data. Um, no, but uh, I think there are solutions and we, ha we have to take that into account, especially with uh, now a world going into metaverse where the glasses or other stuff is uh, also more and more connected and uh, the body uh, data like uh, my pupils, uh, dilation or so, uh, will be uh, also interpreted. It can be health information, it can be health tr medical treatment, but also uh, everything else like um, work or um, my, my recreational context. Thinking everything together, I think, is a solution. I'm sure there are a lot of questions left. I, uh so uh, we have to, uh, to finish. Uh, I think you, we can, uh, you can send us uh, your questions and we will be uh, grateful to, to answer them. Of course. Thank you very much.